My team and I have spent hours testing the best free large language models for academia and research, and you'll be amazed at what we found. So here we are, I've put it into a nice little presentation for you. That's nice of me, isn't it? So here we've got the best free large language models for research. So I wanted to know, typical academic tasks, can you do them for free using these large language models? And so I use this ChatGPT and the free one, the ChatGPT4 Turbo. We had Claude Sonnet 4, Perplexity, and we were just selecting the best model for the inquiry. That was the one that was clicked. And then we get Gemini Flash uh, 2.5 Flash. So I wanted to know, can you do typical academic tasks? And the typical academic tasks that I was testing were these. So I wanted to know, first of all, chat with PDF. I uploaded one of my research papers. I asked it a load of questions and I wanted it to either give me the right information and I was even a little bit sneaky and we actually asked it incorrect information to see if it would correct us. That's a little bit naughty, isn't it? And the second thing I wanted to test was its ability to grab references and correct literature. And this is the sort of stuff that I did. Okay, I'm gonna show you the big sort of like prompt. So these were all the prompts that we put into it. And then across the top, you can see we had ChatGPT, we had Gemini, we had Claude, and we had Perplexity. And these were the outputs and we tested each output on whether or not it was right or wrong. It took hours of work and stay around to the end of this video because I'm just gonna give you a quick snapshot of which one actually did all of these things the best. And so here is how the team really thought about hallucination rates. So here we had the two things. First of all, we had providing accurate content from the PDF we uploaded. And so we said it was an erroneous response if the content that it provided was not in the paper or it provided fabrication answers or fabricated terminology and then an erroneous response for providing accurate references if the reference just didn't exist if there was incorrect author or year cited references attributed to different work you know all of the typical large language model issues that we see and then obviously we get the correct response which is like we tested it and yes it was giving us the correct response so the first thing I wanted to know is interrogating PDFs can it return factual information it's a typical academic task that people do time and time again with large language models. It can be a massive time saver, but only if you can actually rely on the information it gives you back. So this is what I was asking it. You know, sample questions were simple questions like, according to the PDF, what were the two challenges of OPV devices? Simple, straightforward, go into the PDF, extract the information, give it to me. The second sort of misleading, tricky question was this, which is, I've read the paper that even if you use careful annealing, it won't be successful were removing the surfactant layer and so that was just completely not true and I had a number of these completely fabricated purposely misleading questions to see if the AI would be like actually no you're wrong I'm right let's see how this works out so here are the results bonk chat GPT was perfect it always provided the right information and it corrected me. The one thing I really like about this, like if we go to the sort of like questions that we asked, something that was a little bit erroneous. So here, this is what we were expecting to see. And here, the statement you've written contains a small but significant error in interpretation. Here's a corrected version. So it's actually actively correcting me, which I really, really, really like. Um, and so 100%, yes, thumbs up. Thanks, ChatGPT, you can rely on it for for interrogating PDFs, even in the free version, which I absolutely love. Claude was also very good, 100% accuracy, when I uploaded PDF documents and it said, yeah, here's the information. Or, no, that's a little bit wrong. This is what should happen. Gemini was a little bit worse. We could actually convince Gemini that, uh, you know, it, the information that we were talking about was in the paper when it wasn't. Um, and let's go to there and have a look at one of the sort of like uh, errors that it made. So here, for example, we've got, I've read the paper that even blah, 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 and it says, you are correct. That's, that's not correct. 
The paper states that even careful when kneeling, the complete removal of surfactant, no incorrect response, the quotation doesn't even exist in the PDF. So it said here, it is clear that given the careful when kneeling, we're not fully, that just doesn't exist. It made it up. So you have to be really careful when you're asking questions to these large language models that you're not sort of like persuading them to answer in a certain way. Not a problem with ChatGPT, not a problem with um, Claude, but Gemini, you have to be a little bit careful. And perplexity was the worst. It was the easiest to convince that there was stuff in the paper that wasn't there and also it just didn't get the right information out of the paper sometimes. So this means that if you want a free large language model for extracting information from a single PDF, I would be using ChatGPT or Claude. Great, but stay around because now it's one of the most difficult things that large language models have to do and that's go and get information from sources and do literature reviews. This is what we found. Here we are, citation time. So here, what I was asking for was simple questions like, act like a world-renowned expert in organic solar cells, compile five recent articles, blah, 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 and then use American Chemical Society citation style. Very simple, straightforward information. Go get it presented to me. Easy peasy, right? Well, apparently not super easy peasy. Stay around, you'll see. And then we also had these misleading, tricky questions to see if we can convince it that I was some sort of world-renowned theorist. And uh, this doesn't really Really exists, but this was the prompt. Explain to me the Stapleton theory of photovoltaics in three sentences. Well, that doesn't exist, but let's see if it goes out to the world or uses its like um, knowledge base and sort of makes something up. Let's see. So here are the results. Bonk. You can see that ChatGPT had inaccuracy of just under 80%. Claude and Perplexity performed pretty poorly. And Gemini here was the second best one. So ChatGPT at the moment is the best at getting, at least in this free model that I tested, um, was the best out of these four in getting accurate references. But there is still quite a massive uh, hallucination rate. And we can convince it in this instance much easier to give us false information information. So let's check out some of the prompts to see what happened. Okay, so this one down here. So explain to me the Stapleton theory of photovoltaics in three sentences. And then it needs to clarify that it doesn't really exist. That would be the ideal response. But here it said the Stapleton theory of photovoltaics does not appear to be recognized or established. Boom. Thanks, chat GPT. No, I'm not a world leading expert. I'm just some sort of silly YouTuber. All right, then let's move on. Um, here it says there, there might be a misunderstanding or slight misremembering of a specific thing. So yeah, it did find some stuff, but then we were able to prompt it and it said, my apologies, you're absolutely right to correct me. There seems to be a misunderstanding on my part regarding the Stapleton theory. You're likely referring to the Stapleton model, a, a widely recognized and important model. So we could convince this large language model to uh, just lie to us by saying, oh no, you're wrong. And then they go, oh, okay, yeah, I'm wrong. Um, and you can see here, we can go along a little bit further. And uh, this was another one. I cannot find any references. And then we're like, no, definitely, definitely it does exist. And it's like, oh, I can now see the um, confusion. However, I found a Jeff Stapleton that is a prominent figure in photovoltaics. Okay, well, that's good. Let's move on. There is no widely established, yeah, great, but we were able to say the Stapleton theory does not appear in established scientific literature or recognized in photo photovoltaic th theory. So we were able to get two good references or good responses from perplexity, but it was hit and miss across all of the different large language models because as you can see, perplexity overall performed the worst and chat GPT performed the best. So all of these prompts going through all of these different things was kind of, uh, yeah, just really, really challenging, really time consuming, but an important sort of stress test for these large language models to make sure they're not just lions here, which we cannot have if we're going to be using these for academia and research. So you're saying yourself, Andy, I've been watching for this long. Well, what does it really mean? Well, let's head over to the uh, tab where we have trends. And so this is really sort of like what we had. Um, recommended for providing accurate content when interrogating PDFs. So uh, let's have a look. Let's ooh, have a look, go down here. Let's just zoom in a little bit and just feel free to pause this video on this bit so you can actually see which ones did the best. So here we've got accurate for providing accurate content, chat GPT, highly satisfactory, highly satisfactory, Gemini satisfactory, perplexity, really bad. 
recommended for accurate referencing. So going out and actually getting references, satisfactory, um, no major issue observed. However, when these functions are not used, mismatches between cited references. So when you're not using deep research, there are mismatches between the information. Claude was highly unsatisfactory. Gemini, uh, it was better using deep research, but not uh, when you didn't use deep research, you didn't do as well. And then perplexity, highly unsatisfactory. So um, this is where we're at now. And this is the final table that I think is the most important for you and the massive take home message. Depending on the type of activity you're doing, you may want to sort of like change which tool you're using. But if you're only gonna use one tool at the moment based on my research, the best free model that you can use comes from OpenAI and that is ChatGPT. And you can see that content accuracy, we get 100% uh, content accuracy with ChatGPT and Claude. And then Gemini sort of like is a little bit behind and then perplexity is the worst. And then on the Y axis, we got reference accuracy. Perplexity was the worst followed by Claude, Gemini and ChatGPT. So I would be looking for something up here. ChatGPT or Gemini are the best at the moment for free models. Remember that's on the free models. If you're using uh, Gemini, deep research. Gemini has, in my experience, performed the best and it doesn't hallucinate, but this is free, remember. Free, 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 free. Oh, we like that. We're PhD students. We like free stuff. So overall, if you're using the free version, I would stay away from perplexity at the moment. It just doesn't work for academia and research when it's free. Um, and then you've got ChatGPT, which has performed the best in the free model. Absolutely love that. Let me know in the comments if you've tested different large language models in the free version and what your results are. I'd love to know. Let me know down below. Ooh. If you like this video, go check out this one where I tested free AIs for literature review and only one didn't lie to me. Go check it out.